In today's video, we're gonna make photos come to life and animate them inside of After Effects. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film and welcome to our channel. So this is gonna be an extremely helpful tutorial because probably already in the past or even in the future, you're gonna be working with photos and just being able to animate them can help you bring up the value of your video. And there's a lot of cool creative options that you can add to animate a photo. So before we jump into the tutorial, for those of you who are looking to save time and get work done very efficiently, there's two 3D photo animation toolkits called Photo Motion and Volume Max that will allow you to take still images and turn them into 3D photos very quickly. So if you want to check those out, I will drop those links in the description to Photo Motion and Volume Max. Here we are inside of After Effects, and the first thing you obviously want to do is bring in your photo. Obviously, if you're doing a 16-9 aspect ratio, you're going to probably have to adjust your photo. So scale that in and get that ready to go. So everyone's photo is going to be different, right? But what I want to take a look at here is separating the main focus of this photo from the background. So it's very easy to do this in After Effects with the new Content Aware Fill tool. So if you don't see the Content Aware Fill, just go up to Window and there it is. So what we're going to do here is just grab the Pen tool and we're just going to create a mask around what we want to be able to separate from our background. So I'm just going to create this mask around here and you can see it's nowhere you know, amazing or anything, but that's fine. So then what I'm going to do is hit M on my keyboard for Mask and set the mask to Subtract. All right, awesome. Then I'm coming here to the Content Aware Fill, and I'm gonna set the Alpha Expansion to about five. And before I click on Generate Fill Layer, what I'm gonna do here is go to the beginning of our timeline and hit N on our keyboard to bring in the endpoint, and then click on Generate Fill Layer. And this way, it'll only create one uh, frame here, and as you see, it basically just duplicated the background, and that's good. It doesn't have to be perfect, and you know that works. So the reason why we did that is because we don't want to have it analyze you know, a 10 minute photo when it's just a still frame. And that would take a very long time. And what we'll do here is grab our new fill layer, right click the layer, go to time and click on freeze frame. And we'll just stretch this out for the entire composition. So boom, the background's officially separated from our talent. And then when we're done here, we'll grab both our layers, go up to layer pre-compose, and we'll just call it image background. Perfect. And then in this main composition, we'll want to bring in our original photo without the mask, exactly how we had it lined up. Now we need to get a little bit more detailed with the pen tool and officially cut everything out from the background. So we can come in here and just grab our pen tool. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything because we'll just feather this, but we're just gonna cut out, in our case, our talent here uh, or whatever object that you need to cut out. In my opinion, this is one of the more efficient ways of doing this still in After Effects, even though there's the roto brush, but uh, I personally like using the pen tool. Um, and of course, this technique could be done in Photoshop as well. So it's really up to you how you want to do this, but the pen tool for what I'm doing here, it works great. And it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. And then when your mask is done, you want to hit F on your keyboard for mask feather and increase the feathers by a little bit, like five to eight, nothing too crazy, uh, just so you have a nice blend. Now this is on its own layer and we can do whatever we want. Um, so this is gonna allow us to create a little bit of parallax in this image and we'll be able to add even more animation here uh, here in a second. So let's go ahead and get the animation out of the way really quick. So what we do here is grab our background image, which is cut out. We hit S on keyboard for scale and we click on the stopwatch to add a keyframe. Go to five seconds or the end of your animation, however long you want the clip to be, and we'll increase the scale. So now the background will be animating separate from whatever we have cut out, right? Then we can grab, you know, the object that we cut out or the person and we can add a keyframe for scale. And also in this case, we'll hold down shift and hit P on keyboard for position and add a keyframe there as well. So we keep everything where it needs to stay. And then we'll move to the end of our timeline and maybe we'll scale this down by a little bit and we'll bring this down to the bottom of our comp. So now we have this nice parallax animation between the main focus of our photo and the background. So this is a really cool technique and it's pretty easy to do. Now we wanna be able to add some more elements into this to just really make this come to life because all we have is a you know, a decent parallax effect. So there's a lot of different things we can do. So maybe we take our background image, go up to effect and go to uh, go to color correction and go to brightness and contrast. We can all click the stopwatch for brightness and we'll type in wiggle, open parenthesis two comma 50 close parenthesis. And this will add like a very nice, you know, flicker effect to the background and you can change how intense you want this to be and how fast or slow. Uh, the first number dictates how many uh, wiggles per second and this is uh, the amount the second number so you can change those as you see fit and since this is technically still a still image uh, there is no moving noise like there is in like video so I want to add some noise to 
really make this look like you know it's a video so we'll go to layer new adjustment layer and then we'll go up to effects noise and grain and we're going to add noise and i'll set the noise amount to maybe 12 percent and i'll uncheck use color noise and this will make it feel more authentic rather than just a still photo so you know i don't know if you can see that very well here on youtube and there's just a little bit of you know that nice noise into the shot so one thing I want to take a look at is using stock elements like particles and even lens flares to help just take this you know animated photo to the next level. So we can take in some stock assets. I'll, I'll link some free packs that I use in the description. And, and the elements that I'm specifically using are from a pack called Cine Punch, uh, which have like 9,500 elements in it with particles, lens flares, uh, color correction LUTs, and so much more filmmaking uh, you know elements that you know I'll just link that in the description if you want to check that out. But we'll come in here and we'll bring this particle you know pack in here. We'll scale this down and we'll toggle switch the modes until we see the blend mode and set this to screen. And now for our particles added, we now have a nice level of detail added into our composition. And of course, you can put these particle layers behind whatever you cut it out as well. So that's really cool. You can really build some depth with this. Another thing I want to take a look at is adding a cool rain effect in here as well. So what we do here is create a new adjustment layer. We'll go up to effect simulation and we're going to grab uh, CC rainfall. You don't really need to touch much of the settings here. You know, if you want to make the size a little bit thicker, you can. I think this is a really cool effect. So if you, you can adjust the speed and the wind. So there's a lot of cool options with this. And then of course, one thing we need to do is toggle switch the modes and make sure that we turn on motion blur for our animated layers. Nice, so this just adds a very nice, all right, cool. And this just adds a very nice level of de All right, and overall this has a, a nice level of detail to overall image and this looks really nice. So now you have a handful of techniques that will allow you to animate photos and just add more detail and value to your overall video. So hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creating.